Capitalism Explained, using a collage. Imagine we have an arena. This arena has two owners, i.e. the capitalists, who hire and fire people as needed. For the arena to function, we need workers such as cleaners, tradesmen, and delivery guys. We also need the entertainers. A couple of thousand years ago, we used to have slaves called gladiators who fought each other using iron and steel. But nowadays, thanks to human rights, we've decided that two people killing each other in the arena is not very civilised. Instead, we make do with soccer players and mixed martial artists. Without all these individuals, our arena would fall into disrepair, and without any of the entertainers, we wouldn't be able to attract any customers. So to keep our workers coming back, we give them some money so that they can feed their families, rent an apartment, buy a mobile phone so that we can call them when we need them, and basically allow them to wallow away their meaningless little lives. Some of the workers, due to their popularity with the customers, insist on getting more money, so we give them a token amount. This shuts them up and keeps them coming back. Of course, a lot of them just go out and spend all their money on booze and drugs. They seem to forget that they can only be a sports star for so long until their bodies give out. Of course, we wouldn't be doing any of this unless we could make a big fat profit from ticket sales. That's what this is all about, right? Making profit. And lots of it. So we've got this situation where a few people have a lot of the wealth, and the actual people who do stuff, i.e. the workers, can squabble all over the rest. But there's a problem emerging. The wealth divide between rich and poor is growing. The world's rich are getting richer. Here's a graph showing the Forbes 400 wealthiest individuals in America. In 1982, the average member had a net worth of $230 million. Fast forward to 2016, the average member had about $6 billion, which is over 10 times the average from 1982, taking into account inflation. If we look at the richest member on the Forbes list, we can see that in 1982, the richest guy was only worth $2 billion, but in 2016, $81 billion. Why any one person would need so much wealth is beyond me. The global distribution of wealth is also extremely skewed. The top 1% hold 50.1% of all the world's wealth. The top 5% hold 76.4%. That's astounding. The bottom 50% of the world only hold 0.6% of the world's wealth. Unbelievable. This is what capitalism has created. Huge wealth disparity and a rising underclass. This graph tells it all. The top 0.1% hold as much wealth as the bottom 90%, and it's only getting worse. The last time that such wealth disparity has occurred before was just before the Great Depression of 1929 to 1939. Slowly but surely, wealth got back into the hands of the many. But it looks like we're making the same mistake again. We're allowing the wealthy to hoard all the wealth again, and it can only end in disaster. So back to our rich arena owners. Based on the graphs we've just seen, these guys have been cutting the income of their workers in order to inflate their own net wealth. And if the workers don't like it, what can the greedy capitalists do? Offshore, of course. Move to a country where labour is cheap. Build factories where the governments are open to bribery and allow you to build as many as you want. Get cheap labour, cheap goods, and make a massive profit. Of course, there's always the issue of pollution. More factories equals more pollution. But that doesn't matter, because you're off living in a nice secluded region of the world where there is no pollution. In the meantime, your factories are pumping out more goods, making you more profit, which in turn you use to make more factories, pumping out more goods and more pollution, until before you know it, we end up with the silly situation where the average person has to wear a mask. Families have to fork out huge amounts of money to get the latest air filtration technology. Of course, most people can't afford this. According to Matthew Kahn, a professor of economics at the University of Southern California, Beijing has become a place where the rich live in cleaner parts of the city and on more polluted days they can drive to work, work inside, access better doctors, have second homes in the countryside, and have expensive and effective air filters. Such a phenomenon is called the tragedy of the commons. The commons refers to any shared resource that no one really owns. Things like the air we breathe, the oceans, rivers, fish stocks, etc. The problem with capitalism is that it doesn't consider these things important until it's all too late. Even though we're living in the year 2017, places like China and India still put economic activity above their own people's health. They let the rich multinationals come into their countries, build factories, and create an environmental disaster, all in the name of profit. Occasionally we do get angry and demand that the rich pay their fair share. We demand tax increases and better wealth redistribution, but the millionaires and the billionaires fight tooth and nail against it. With the revelations of the Paradise Papers and the like, we know that the rich are simply shifting their income offshore to countries with little or no income tax. 
Large companies buy so-called business services in order to move their profits offshore, avoiding huge amounts of tax in their most profitable markets. Australia is losing at the very least billions of dollars of tax revenue, if not tens of billions of dollars every year due to these greedy multinationals, and we're letting it happen. According to ABC's Stephen Long, if the middle class and the working class are bearing a disproportionate share of the tax burden, trust in democracy is undermined. So to answer the question, what is capitalism, or at least, what is modern capitalism, the answer is simple. A few rich guys, lots of money. The rest of us, a little bit of money to squabble over. As time goes on, rich guy, more money. The rest of us, less money. Thanks for listening.